Captain's Log. Start at 192.168.1.6.7.7.7. Well, let me start that again. <laughs> Captain, are you repeating yourself? Uh, this is the Captain's Log. I've got to make sure I write it down perfectly. Unfortunately, I lost the ability to write without speaking a long time ago. Uh, Captain's Log 192.168.1. Dot seven. Me and my science officer have been stranded on this planet for many, 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 many weeks now. We have got a whole load of resources together, but still, I feel like we are vulnerable. I, I, I don't know about you, Cap... Uh, no, I'm Captain. I'm Captain Twitchy, science officer, Zedtech. Do you feel that we are vulnerable right now? Uh, not, not particularly at the moment. Uh, I'm near you, though. I, I, I completely disagree. I feel like we are, are super vulnerable. So I'm going to spend uh, most of my time today building a wall. I, I hear is what all good leaders do. Uh, okay. If they if they want to get re-elected, they need to build the wall that they promised at the beginning. Uh, I, I, I assume, Mr. Science Officer, that I can count on your vote when it comes to re-election of the captain. I didn't know we voted for a captain, but yes, I will do that. Uh, thank you very much, science officer. Thank you. Right, I'm going to go see how our stone and wool production is going on because uh, earlier on, in between uh, science logs, uh, captain's logs, sorry, I put down a whole bunch of markers to show where I would like the outside of the wall to go around, or at least this bit. Uh, I, I'm feeling like we could uh, get our neighbours involved here in the south, uh, yeah, southwest, bottom left of the map. Uh, if not involved, we will have to deal with them somehow. I'm not, I'm not sure how we deal with natives. Uh, I would like to start a diplomatic mission. Yeah, I, I feel uh, a bottle of wine, a bottle of Prosecco, and uh, a, a, a nice box of chocolates will probably go a long way in the interspecies relationship here. Um, okay, Captain. So, Captain, you remember when we were uh, talking about uh, a game? Solar having, energy. Woo. Having artificial intelligence inside of it that's not actually aware of the outside the world. Completely happy living in its own. So uh, a, a simulated consciousness that is uh, locked off from the, the the physical world, if you will. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We were talking of those earlier. Yeah, but uh, I'm just pointing out that it's completely happy living in its own universe, to be precise. I should hope so. If we've made, if we've, uh, if we've created conscious beings and put them into a simulated reality, we best have made that simulated reality nice for them. Oh, man, could you imagine? Could you imagine if we didn't? That would be horrific. The great debate of the of this century is whether uh, a, a creature sentient enough to make decisions actually deserves the rights of a a human. Yes, uh, a human. Now, I personally, uh, unfortunately, I'm going to be not not amazingly entertaining with this by saying that just outright yes they do they have the rights if they if they have an ability to even to even suggest that they want the rights then we should probably give it to them because we as a species uh we've not done so well on this uh we we quite often um will discriminate against things that later generations are like why did you do this uh, the, these guys are obviously suffering because of your because of your discrimination, uh, and and I I don't want to be part of that tradition. Wh whilst we may very well be quite strong in that tradition as humans, oh that's nice. Uh, I I feel we can do better. I feel we can do better. All right, so I did the entirety of the East Wall. That was actually more than I was expecting to get out of that first run. <laughs> uh, but I need to disagree with you. You need to disagree. Please, please do, science officer. It's it's what you're here for. To uh... Uh, I don't think robots and, a and AI actually want human rights. Do you not think they want human rights? Well, they want their own set of, of robot rights that are significantly different from human rights. Yeah, definitely, because we as humans don't have any laws that are actually prohibiting or allowing transfer from one body to another. This is true. Is is the free exchange of consciousness a right? Oh man, yeah. You you have opened my eyes. I mean, I was just thinking, you know, right to uh, free movement, the right to exist, uh, energy input. We could, we don't necessarily have to call it food, but the right to energy input. Uh, yeah, but, but yeah, there's right there's a lot there, of things. You change the human right. It's no longer a human right. It's yeah. It's now well uh, as always. We um we we need to sort of 
change the goalposts, if we will. But like, as per the Copernicus revolution, we need to take ourselves out of the center and put something else there, something more encompassing. We immediately discovered that robots may not actually want all human rights. They might actually want more than that, or specific so, rights. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I think I think they will. I think they will. I, I, I also feel there is probably a way, um, you know, with the with the wonders of our malleable uh, language to rephrase the rights to make them more more generic. Like? I think that would be a good thing. Uh, like, for instance, you know, we, we we have like a right to water, a right to food, um, but what what that actually is is the the compounds our body needs to run. So we need to to reword it to be to like energy and and sustenance or something like that. Yeah, but my my question is, a right to food and water. Does it really need to be specified if the right to exist is there? As one wishes. Mm, yeah, that that is the question. Yeah, obviously, if water is an integral part of your existence and you are given the right to exist, yeah, yeah, that that obviously does fall under the same same process. Yeah, I definitely see what you're saying here. That is not where I wanted to put all that. Oh no, I just spent for ages loading up a box and it was the wrong box. <laughs> <laughs> um, then again, so we can look at it like that, and. So, the robots might actually want to have their own specific rights that are covering their particular needs. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and, and I would be happy to give it to them. So, does a robot have a right to commit suicide then? <sighs> yes. Yeah, honestly, I don't think there is a being, conscious or not, that doesn't have the right to end its existence. Like there are, pl but there have to been human law. It's illegal. Well, I was about to say there have been many situations where society have tried to dictate to a person whether they can end their life or not. But we, despite all the laws and enforcement systems and everything that have ever been put into place, we still live in a world that doesn't actually stop you from doing stuff only punishes you afterwards so if there is a law saying you cannot kill yourself well how are they going to enforce that after you have done it what if you fail at it well then you need to answer for the problem of failing right <laughs> <laughs> i mean then we get to a particular point that you will be punished by death for failing <laughs> and committing suicide Actually, I think that's probably a really good way of, uh, of of wrapping up this entire problem. Let's let's make it so that the punishment for death is indeed, uh, sorry, the punishment for suicide is indeed corporal and kill them. I I, I think everybody wins in that scenario. <laughs> Society feels like they've done something. The person who wants to end it has ended it. Yeah, I I think we should definitely have an uh, uh, an opt in to corporal punishment. What if he, he changed just walk his up, mind? <laughs> just walk up to, to any police station and be like, Hi, I, I, I wish to commit suicide. And like, right, we're arresting you. <laughs> I, I, I don't think they're going to kill you as they're going to send you to a mental asylum. Uh, who will then kill you, surely? I mean, well, if you if you want to do it, then that's that's illegal. That, that's the problem with actually executing people. Isn't the person that executed the pe pers that person a murderer then? Yeah, yeah. So this gets back into you know when is it societally acceptable to kill someone? Um, and it's only when the rest of society, or at least the systems that society have put in place, say it is. I'm sorry, which... but this might sound dystopian future. Okay, that's the society, where we live. society, through TV, votes on who the punishment. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, that's 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 close to the um, to the the AI making votes thing that I was talking yeah, about. Yeah, but this is more disturbing. <laughs> it, it is like making <laughs> making an execution or a, a trial a reality TV show. I mean, there there was this. 
Back in the day, there was an experiment at this. Uh, it was uh, called Judd Judith or something like that, uh, where they where they had everybody on TV uh, and people would scream and shout at each other and then you would get to vote in and decide who was right and who was wrong. So it was getting away with the entire idea of a jury and opening it up to uh, the television audience. Um, it was horrific. Yes. There were many mistrials and uh, many, many people put to death when they really did not deserve so, as, as shown later on by statistical uh, analysis done by the quantum supercomputers of Google. Yeah. I mean, Google is, has been recording a lot of information constantly. Constantly. They, they are the historians. Uh, may I suggest putting radars at the edge uh, where the uh, walls are? I was actually thinking about that. I also needed to put one down by where the stone is and stuff like that. Oh, I've got a whole bunch of radars in my inventory. I was just about to go and grab some. I could have done it already by now. Let's <laughs> let's go and have a look. <laughs> or I'm going to go have a look anyway. Dystopian, overly democratic. I mean, it, these are fine lines. <laughs> uh, so there was a book describing a perfect utopia. In today's light, it sounds like a dystopia because it uh, depends on slavery. Oh, wow, okay. And depends on making all religions except for Christianity illegal, especially atheism, even though it's not a religion. Yeah, it's a religious stance. I can uh, understand why people put it in the it's same... It's an opinion. Yeah. Well, I mean, to be fair, from the atheist point of view, so is religion. And they also depend on making gold a, mock, a, a mocking item, which only slaves are wearing. Oh wow, right. oh, that's interesting. Uh, they were there, the communities are living in large houses of 12 families, then the, the, those 12 houses are part of another 12, group of 12 um, smaller counties, let's say. And they're basically progressively just voting for a person above. And okay. at the end there is a king. One person in charge. So it's like, if if you will, a democratic feudal system. Like you you vote for the people that are going to be in charge. Is yes. It, did I get that right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, a person can do only one job that has been given to them by oh, that sounds boring. The, the state. Yeah. And it's the first job that they need to do for two years is farming. After that, they can choose a job that's available. Okay, that makes sense. Everybody needs food, and then you can specialize. Okay, yeah. Describing that with uh, perfect, perfect cities uh, just managed by slaves and other people, it sounds more dystopian than utopian. It does, doesn't it? And I think this, uh, this, this speaks to not not so much the nature of words, but the ch the changing ideals of society. Right. So I don't. I don't think at any point will any any society... So, like, let, let's say Victorian society was different from the Great Information Society that came later on that century. Yeah. I, if neither of those two could relate to each other. No, uh, that's... Yet, yet they were less than 100 years apart from each other. I think that's so, the change in generations, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, and I, I think this means that nobody is ever going to be able to describe a utopia for all societies because society changes so quick that what used to be a utopia actually is pretty nasty. It's, it's an interesting thing to think about. Like, how, yeah. how the things that we consider right and true nowadays are going to be very different in the future. Not so, even that far in the future. So, what would you describe a utopia? Mm. What social standing would a citizen of that country that's in the utopia be? I mean, ideally, you... <laughs> and this is a dangerous phrase, I understand it. Ideally, you want everyone to be equal. Now, I know when you say that, almost immediately someone's like, yeah, but who's more equal than anybody else? Well, the okay. AI is. That's, well, that's how we're going to do that. <laughs> mm. uh, which I know then very very quickly becomes humanity getting sidelined and robots becoming the future um, because unfortunately given the Darwinian laws, robots are actually a little bit more suited to long term habitation of the universe isn't our people. job to become a 
slave to our own creation. Yeah, yeah, you, you know, like how parents drive kids around everywhere. Yes, it's it's a very it's a very similar process, you know. Like you you just you live to help your children, and I I don't think anyone's really going to disagree. E even in the early parts of the twenty first century, I don't think anyone would disagree that humanity's going to spawn a race of of. Of robots. Yeah, but I think your analogy was slightly wrong. I think the children, after growing up, are gonna take care of the parents. Uh, well, I mean, they. Th I don't think any robot is going to besmirch working in our in our uh, warehouses for us. Hmm. Maybe they will. Maybe maybe that will be the great uprising. Is it right to program an AI to like its job? I, I think it is actually. I think it is um, mainly because like, if you if you look from evolution's point of view, evolution programs biological beings to enjoy the things that that move it forwards. You know that. Yes. That, um, and and I think creating a robot that also kind of feels the same is is just doing that. Is just going look your purpose if you will is to move these trolleys around you should be incredibly happy about moving those trolleys around um yeah i i, I don't think there's anything wrong with that the the choices of what we then make enjoyable may, may, maybe there's a little gray zone there that needs working on yeah this this is a really complicated this is actually a really complicated question it, it also speaks to things like um so you, you might have seen the experiments where they uh shoot magnetic waves into human brains and make the humans less repulsed by some pretty bad ideas yeah like is, is that is that moral or not now as a human with a brain i'm saying no that's not that's not moral no, but just... if it's if it's something that really needs to be like let's 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 uh, let's say um far in the future we've colonized another planet and to survive as the human race we need to commit genocide on this other um really virulent uh pox bacteria say no one is going to be no, no one's going to say it's bad to wipe out these bacteria but if we were then trying to wipe out, say, the dolphins, people would be angry with that. Now, what's the difference? That's the question there, is what's the difference between bacteria and dolphin? Uh, relatability. Yeah, yeah, I think I think that might be it. Will we not like the fact that we're killing sentient things? I don't know, that is that's that is really tough. That uh, is really tough. If 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 the, the hostile organisms happen to be able to go, hey, I don't like you, I mean, yes. does that... Does that make it less... Here's the question. Yeah. It's the trolley question, of course. The old, old, old uh, trolley, old trolley question. Qu yeah. Uh, so the trolley question is, if there's one person in the direct line of the train, um, or you could pull the lever... No, sorry, if it was five people in, in front of the train, but you could pull the lever to sacrifice one person, would you do so? Yes. Uh, and honestly, it all depends who that one person is. If that's my mum, I'm sorry, those five people are dead. <laughs> that that's I know that's bad biological programming. I know that that I should pull the lever and save the five people, not the one. But I am a human with very base needs. <laughs> I don't think it's bad biological programming. I think it's just preserving one's genetic code actually. Yeah, yeah, uh, which doesn't work well for the species. Yeah, yeah, it's it's where <laughs> it's where ants and bees really have it have one over on humans. They, they 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 know what's up. They know how to perpetuate their species. Well, that's a bit of a stumble there. Pe -pe 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 perpetuate bees and ants and stuff like that. They they really know. I, but the thing is, they're not perpetuating their species. They're just perpetuating the queen's DNA. Yeah, but they're all part of it. Yeah, yeah. It, I, I don't know. Are ants more or less selfish than humans? That's the question there. Uh, are they more or less selfish? Yeah, oh. because they're own. Like they, they seem from the outside to be less selfish because they're working towards the greater good. You know, in big inverted commas, the greater good. But at the same time, it is the greater good is only one, one queen's DNA. 
is that actually the greater good, or is that just this one queen's good? Okay, but I, th have I have stumbled on a conundrum there. That is, that's awesome. I like. But conundrum. you do also have the question: is if if let's just put a different type of biological organism that's completely a hive mind that's all are mentally connected to each other. Yeah. Is that one entity or many? I think that question, unfortunately, is not going to be answered until we meet one and we get to ask them. At which point they're going to give us an answer that doesn't actually answer the question. They'll be like, well, I'm me, but I'm also them. <laughs> but think, I, I, I think they are they. They, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I am them. I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, well, I think it would be more or less, or less something like, we are who we are. Yeah. Yeah, don't, don't put your labels on me. <laughs> Did you just assume that I'm a single brain organism? <laughs> yeah. <that> <laughs> did, did you just assume my polar polarity? <laughs> polarity. It's it, it that is a word that I have serious trouble with. It means more than one, but it's not like it and it, it comes from plural, but it's not said the same way. It's it's a word that I have real trouble with. <laughs> Pronouncing or understanding it. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, as as I've got so I have trouble pronouncing my R's properly. It's not the biggest problem in the world. Um, it's If I'm saying uh, something like Ross, uh, I, I want to say Was with a, with a W, yeah. but it, it, it's it's different. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's very mild, like very, very mild. But it also means that I, I get things like, uh, if, I, if I put two, two S noises together, like for instance, machine chassis. <laughs> I, I I have to stop and think <laughs> about the words before I'm about to say them because my mouth just doesn't want to form that mm, that shape. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Machine <laughs> chassis. No, I can't. Yeah, it, it's a real difficult word, though. <laughs> it's, it's it's hard. <laughs> I would go with an S. Machine. Mas oh God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You see, it's tough. It's tough. <laughs> Machine chash No, it doesn't <laughs> sound right. <laughs> oh, I'm glad I got you with that as well. <laughs> I've just noticed I'm not wearing any armor at all. 